And of course, a uh, guitar player in his new band, Dominique. Hello. How are you guys doing today? Yeah, fine. Really good uh, weather here. Because we had all the time bad uh, weather in uh, Germany and nice to be here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, this is Dominique's first time in the States. That's right. And you, Demo? No, it's not. A couple of times I was here okay. already in 1966, already here as a wow. tourist. Okay. How do you like it? Oh, that time was great, but this time is also great because uh, I'm getting old and uh, I have another perspective to see something different things. Yeah. Yeah. The weather right now is really nice, it's not too hot. That's no, it's uh, too hot, but it's good. If you come from Germany, it's uh, really like a paradise. Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah so I've just phoned with home and it's raining there. Okay, <laughs> so it's a nice break for you guys. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's a holiday almost like. <laughs> <laughs> so besides holidaying and vacationing, you guys are here to uh, perform, right? Yeah. Okay, so explain, uh, if you will, what you guys are going to be doing. We talked a little bit outside about the instant composition. Yeah, instant composing, because everybody talking about uh, uh, improvising, bec because I don't like this word, because we are just making really stuff on the stage, brand new thing on the stage, and uh, we don't uh, rehearse or we don't uh, uh, probe anything before. And also, these uh, members, uh, three members of the uh, band, we pray. Uh, I never saw them before, and uh, I never played before together. Wow. You know? Well, that's a that's a great thing about coming here and uh, joining some musicians from Tom Tommy's friends from his band Fair Flag, and uh, people I never played with before, and okay. I just met them yesterday, and it's going to be really yeah. It was great. a really nice time together with the discipline guys talking. It's going to be really together. great. They are so great. Huh? I, I give you the microphone no, no, so no, no, people no, no, hear it. <laughs> no, Tommy Grenos. We played yeah, in Japan together. Yeah. Yes. Okay, oh. so you guys, both you guys came from Germany to play here, and you're meeting three members of the band <laughs> here for the first time. That's absolutely right. Wow. Okay. Four, four members, sorry. Oh, four. four members, yes. Four. Three plus you. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so describe, if you can, the instant composition. Do you guys go on stage and, and talk for a little bit and figure things out, or does it just start with, uh, with you guys playing a, a line and everyone follows? Or how, how does that process go? Yeah, just as you said, because I impro uh, each song I introduce one person on the member, and he plays as a beginning, and we make together, you know. Oh, OK. So it's, uh, who usually starts it off, the bass player? Drum no, 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 just uh, uh, we don't have any, uh, any plan tomorrow. To me, it's like this, this kind of, this, this way of making music is very unique. Back home, there's no one else doing this way. Mm -hmm. And this kind of freedom is the only way I would do something. And with Damo, it's possible. He got the audience that likes this way of doing music. And apart from Ken or from Damo Suzuki, it's very difficult to find any other musicians who join this idea. And um, instant composing is developed, and it means um, actually everyone in the band is part of putting something into it and has total freedom of changing it, if not liking it. And, and also audience. And the audience. And to feel, uh, it's normal, you feel the audience gives something to the stage. And here it's very special, very specially strong like that. So the audience can make a very big difference. It's what do you, th what is it, what does instant composition add to the music as opposed to, uh, well first as opposed to uh, pre-planned or written music and as opposed to totally improvised music? What does it bring to the, to totally the... Totally uh, improvised. Yeah. Totally. We okay. don't have any idea of what happens. It's almost like a sport, you know. If you like to go to see uh, Los Angeles or Rogers, mm -hmm. <laughs> Dodgers, but uh, <laughs> if, you, if you know what happens before, you don't go to baseball. Yeah, you know? that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You never know what plays are going to happen. No, yeah. we don't even okay. know. And so nobody it's knows. Totally surprised. Yeah. yeah, it's a very good attraction. Okay, the last time that you were here in town, was that the same sort of performance or was it a different type thing? It's the same. I make uh, all the time the same because okay. I think it's the best way to make the music. Okay. And uh, So that's exclusively how you play? Yes, yes, play. yes. Wow. It's okay. exclusively 
exclusively <laughs> what I do. I do nothing else but, like uh, this okay. way. I can't anymore. How does a musician like your, your, you and Damo, how do you guys prepare for that as your, in your lifetime? It's a very long period of working on uh, the way how to make music, what is music, to understand what the other musician would understand what I do. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a long way of communication. But uh, it means other people can join this immediately if, if, mm -hmm. if they're good. <laughs> yeah, when when they are open minded, you yes, know. Yeah. Yes. So I interviewed Holger two years ago, and his his idea was that Can learned, as you were saying, music as it's supposed to be played, and then after they figured out how to master it, they threw it all out and started again from scratch and just yeah. did did things how they wanted to do it, how how Can wanted to do it. Is that kind of this in the same spirit of you guys not wanting anything pre-planned, totally fresh and new each time? Stem, stems from that? I think uh, all the time we make something some kind of fresh and new and so because members are all, all the time different mm -hmm. and also the place we play the difference. If we play in Los Angeles maybe we make in San Francisco different music you know uh, still member the same but uh, Situations a little bit different. So yes. the band members from LA will be traveling with you to San Francisco. Yes, yes. yes. Wow. Okay. But just imagine, like in Japan, after two concerts, after two nights, J uh, Damu say, "Tonight we won't do something new, nothing else we played before," and we go like that on stage, and we we had a good, a very good night there with you. Yeah, every time we have nice <laughs> night because we are free, total freedom. So, you, in addition to just touring, because of course you love to do it and people want to see you, you're also promoting the Damo Suzuki's Network yeah. album. Yeah. And the music on this was composed the same way? Yeah, same way. All, all the time I make same way. So just one take? Yes, one take. Wow. One take, of course one take, because on the stage we play it, not in the studio. You know? So you have to have a pretty uh, swift engineer to catch all the... Uh, Nuances. Mm, yeah, sometimes not really good, but uh, <laughs> sometimes it's okay. Okay. Should we take a listen? Yeah. Okay, we're going to check out Walking on Fire by request. And the name of the album is Odyssey. And when is this going to be available in stores, you think? Now? Yeah, yes, now. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. This is dublab.com live interview with Damo Suzuki and Dominique, uh, part of Damo Suzuki's network, here with you uh, until 6. And here's something off the brand new album Odyssey once again, Damo Suzuki's network, dublab.com. <laughs> <laughs> dublab.com, music right there off of Odyssey, Dam Damo Suzuki's network, and uh, the name of that tune right there, uh, Walking on Fire, Don't Give Him Water. <laughs> Is there any uh, story behind the name there? Yeah, because I'm quite sadistic. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your uh, sadistic fantasy song? No, I make uh, all the titles uh, after I made, make record, you know, before I don't know the titles because I don't have anything. Mm. As I told you, uh, we don't have any plan for making music before we make on the stage. So do you listen to it and then the, the name that pops in your head becomes... Yeah, sometimes I get fantasy, uh, fantasy with something else, you know. That's yeah. um, when you're singing live like that, um, how long does it take you before you come up with the, the theme where you know you're going to, you know, in, in terms of the lyrics and the vocalization, where you're going to take the song? Oh, it's depending on how much beer I drink before <laughs> and so, you know, <laughs> I cannot tell. So, <laughs> so if Spaceland furnishes you with... Uh, Spaceland is something uh, something else, you know, because maybe you uh, you don't have to drink uh, beer. How do they give you a keg? You can you're gonna be pretty quick minded, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I'm quiet. <laughs> so all the time, guys. Great. So uh, this one was recorded live in Japan. Japan. Okay, and uh, let's see. There are some recorded in Tokyo. Yeah. Some. Uh, well, what are what are what are their uh, locations? Location. What the location? No, you tell. This is album is from, from only from, from Tokyo concert. Uh -huh. We did two concerts, one in the university and one in a, one of the nicest clubs there, Loft. Wow. But uh, we did a lot of concerts there, but we only took took from one place the recordings for this CD, double okay. CD. 
Yes. How did you guys decide on choosing these as the ones that go on the CD? Oh, I sh <laughs> shall I talk? But I, I'm much better don't talk, you know, because I have three kind of de decisions. First, I uh, listen everything, and second, I drink beer. Okay. And third, I do something else. Then I choose then you choose. pieces. Okay. Yes. That's good. That's nice. Um, so the members of the band, go ahead and uh, tell them who's in the band and what they play. What, sorry? Uh, the members of the band and yeah. which instruments they play. Oh, they, uh, <laughs> maybe you can you can read this one. I don't know. <laughs> because I forgot everything. Tommy Grenas plays uh, bass and uh, synthesizer. Dominic Ponsinga, guitar. Nicole Meyer plays drums. Alexa Schonert plays guitar. And... Uh, Carlos Robaro plays percussions okay. on this CD. Great, and you were talking about how it's an international band. It is international, yeah, yes. Totally international. Yes. Germany, Africa, America, yeah. France, Japan, Japan, yes. all over. Yeah, I like to have penguins, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did this band come together? Uh, tell, is there a story behind how you guys um, eventually decided to work together? No, I just uh, decided uh, spontaneous. And uh, I just called them, you know, where they live in Stantamata. We make in Japan some concert, and so then uh, I called him in Los Angeles, Tommy Grenas, and uh, that happens, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I know Tommy from uh, two years before, he played as a supporting group, and so, you know, and he was really nice. That's why he's <laughs> invited from me, and so. Okay, so eventually uh, hooked up like that. Yeah. Cool. And um, we were talking about about how you don't listen to much music other than what no, you're trying I to compose. Actually, I don't have time because I don't like to uh, live like a passive. You know, I like to live active. That means you must make with yourself everything. You know, that's, it's much better because... Always doing something. Yes, because you, you have only one time life, you know. That's, that's okay. enough. And, uh, and also, I have enough time to listen into my music, you know. For instance, for Odyssey. I should take maybe 1,800 minutes or something. Wow. Uh, I must listen to everything, and uh, I don't yeah. have any time for one of that. You did mention two bands, modern bands, that you liked very much. <laughs> what are the, let the listeners know. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think uh, I like uh, Sonic Youth and uh, uh, Stereo Rob and so, you know, from America. You know, That's great. So. If, if, if you like this group, maybe uh, you like this. My oh, it's, music also. Yeah, it's definitely uh, yeah. in that vein, but you can tell that yeah. you know yeah. where, where you're coming from is definitely the roots of that yeah. type of sound. Yeah. And it's good stuff. And uh, let's see. So tomorrow at Spaceland, you guys will be performing. Um, how, how long is usually one of you guys' shows? Oh, it's dependent on when people is good in good, then we play sometimes for five mi uh, five hours. Wow. Yeah, uh, once I play the eight hours, you know, it's wow. dependent. It's <laughs> dependent, you know, our condition also. And I cannot say everything because I'm getting older. And maybe I can play tomorrow only fifteen minutes. You know. Oh, that'd oh, be. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the average length of, uh, you know, of the performances that these were called from? Oh, I didn't get anything. So you can, can you answer, uh, Dominic? Okay, what's the average? the average length of the show when you guys were recording songs for these, uh, the ones in Japan. Uh, what does it mean? Average the average thing? length. Uh, uh, how long were you guys playing when in, in Japan? Uh, this is originally. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many songs he cut cut off the concert, but it's two CDs, and every track is not less than ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got gallons. And we got um, we got liters. You got <laughs> different <laughs> kind of system to we count. All got well, we all have seconds, right? Uh, yeah, we all got <laughs> seconds. <laughs> that's okay, it, that's it. Great. So uh, this is released on your own label, correct? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Because is I, I must make my own label because I like to have freedom. Because if I work with a big company, I don't get any freedom. That, that's a great example, you know. Yeah. For um, I know a lot of people today are are going the independent route yeah. just because of that, yeah. so they can uh, have a freedom to express themselves. But yeah. you've had full control from packaging yeah. to everything. And if you guys can't see this on the uh, yeah. camera there, this is a beautiful package. Yeah. It's a booklet, double CD, instead of the usual double CD jewel case mess. Uh, we have an in inside double CD holder here. It's great. Um, 
and it's uh, two CDs worth of music, and uh, it'll it's out in stores as we speak. Distribution is is uh, is it self distributed or did you go through a distributor? Oh, I don't know <laughs> who make this one. You know, I think one uh, one is a uh, uh, Eurolock uh, in uh, Portland and so on. And uh, actually, in the space making this one in San uh, San Francisco. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, and uh, these will be on sale during your gigs. Yeah. During your performances? Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. We should get to some money, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking uh, off the air about the particular drummer in the group, and you said there's a particular track on the second disc where she's... Uh, yeah, she's really, really nice. Uh, yeah. It's the uh, second one? Dance yeah, second, the yes, yes. Okay, so we sh should be taking a listen to that? Yeah. And here we go. It's on uh, Damo Suzuki's Network Odyssey. Once again, the name of the album, self-released for uh, total freedom of expression. Here's the song Dance of a Thousand... Tarantulas. Real quick, is there a story behind that title? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe I didn't mean so much drinking. <laughs> <laughs> a thousand beers. And we're here, here with that. With a thousand beers and a thousand laughs, it's Damo Suzuki's network on dublab.com. <laughs> Dublab.com, music there from Damo Suzuki Network. Once again, our uh, special live guests in studio. The album Odyssey out now on uh, Damo's very own label. Is there an actual name for the label? Yeah, it's called uh, Damo's Network. Okay, Yeah. great. And uh, the name of that one right there was uh, Dance of a Thousand Tarantulas. Uh, inspired by a thousand beers, you say? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, besides that, I smoke. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, outside, we uh, we found a secret that uh, Jamo thought was... Uh, it's not my secret. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that was taboo to talk about on American radio, but it's not. So let let him know. Your other inspiration besides beer comes from... Uh, yes, you mm. told me. All that. <laughs> <laughs> some, some nice smoke once in a while. Yes. And uh, outside, we were talking about just the uh, your singing in general... And we, we touch on some interesting points as, as your uh, preference for, for language. Yeah, just I make uh, some kind of words with uh, my own language. It's not Japanese, it's a Damo word. And uh, because I don't like any, uh, to put any kind of textures, because it's uh, not more free if you listen to into the, my music 20 years later or something. Because I like to make a music which you can listen if you, uh, you are able to live 120 years. After 120 years, you can listen to this music and still active, you know, that's point. T timeless music. Yes. Basically. Okay. Yes. And uh, when, when was that, when did you... I guess not discover that, but realize that's what you wanted to do. Oh, actually, I did uh, already from the time of the with the, together with Ken already. Okay. Yeah, some of the pieces uh, we, uh, I have no texture at all, you know. Okay. Uh, soup comes to mind. Mm, yes, yeah, something. Yeah. Like yeah, <laughs> for that, I must have uh, maybe five or six joints, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's the story behind that one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> behind most of that album, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you were talking about, uh, of course, this is Dominique's first time in the States, and he likes it very much, but you were also talking about how you were here uh, during the later part of the 60s, and uh, how San Francisco was, was pretty much the epicenter of music here. Yeah. And um, so your musical involvement in that time, you said, was managing uh, s some bands? Yes, I, I did only uh, as a manager for Japanese uh, kids and so I was also a kid about 16, 17 years old okay. and you know just I managed it because I needed some money to get uh, some new hot uh, record from America or something you know that's <laughs> or some nice Italian shoes maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you uh, even begin to to touch into music as how did you figure out that that's a good way to get started in terms of managing did you just know people or did you uh think of it on your own as to start managing? Mm, actually, I didn't make so much money that uh, I can say I was a good manager, but uh, um, I was uh, I was interested about one uh, school boys and they are playing uh, s uh, stuff from uh, Young Rascals and so such, such a time. You know? What was the name of the band? Oh, I cannot remember. Can't remember. No, maybe, wasn't maybe even they don't have a name. You it know? wasn't the spiders or the mops or anything? Uh, <laughs> 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 maybe. That sounds, you know. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Um, so talk about your transition from managing yeah. to vocalist. Yes. Oh, it's, I didn't make any planning with my life and it just happened, you know. Yeah. Maybe everybody knows what happened. 
with Holger and Jackie, and so yeah. that's why I don't like to uh, explain now. So you made your trek from United States to Germany. Yeah. And they, how did they happen upon you? Just on the street or? Uh, yeah, yeah, something. Like really? That, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thus began the Can Legacy, and it continues now. Um, I was telling you earlier. Uh, it seems like a lot of musicians from that era um, that shall remain nameless really don't really uh, do the music, not really that they used to do because everyone has to progress musically, but their feeling is just not the same, but somehow you've retained it. Uh, what do you credit? What do I credit? Is, you know, uh, as, as uh, your, your way to keep on with uh, your initial energy and and uh, feeling in the music. It's just continued all through the years. Yes, I must, I, I must make uh, like that because I told you before, because life is only one time for everybody and that's why I must keep on going with this one. I am, I sh I'm sure quite when I will be 80 years old, I make a music. Maybe it's the same music, but it doesn't matter because it's me. You know, yeah, that is yeah. the important thing. Yeah. Because everybody is trying to make somebody else music and mm -hmm. just uh, they are slave of the music industry and something like that. And they don't have uh, any kind of freedom. Mm -hmm. But I have freedom, very freedom, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's important. Okay. Um, it's, it's funny how we talk about how, uh, you know, you guys wanted to keep things independent now. But a group like Can was on New Way, yeah. right? I mean, how, how was it then? How, why was a major label more open to something as free as can and now it's just not you know it's just not possible that a, a group of cans caliber or even of cans experimentation mm. can even attain a, a record label today on a major yeah i think it's just a business you know since maybe 20 years only business yeah businesses maybe, yeah everybody see like to see uh, money you know that's uh, the business has taken over the music yes, rather than... Yes, yes, yeah. Because uh, it's nothing to do with my life. Because you cannot carry on uh, what you made in your life. If you die, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a done matter. Yeah, it's a done deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so, once again, the uh, album, Odyssey, named after anything in particular? Or? If you like. <laughs> uh, if you like, then put the fourth piece. Okay. Over first album because it's something different. Okay, without piano. Okay. Yes. So uh, the name of the album is Odyssey. Is there n a story behind the name of the album or? No, actually not. Just, just I put this everything together. Okay. It's uh, if you go to some kind of museum and uh, watch out p paintings, you know, kind of things like that. Okay. So uh, Damo Suzuki's network Odyssey, the name of the album on Damo's Network Records, independently made. Uh, along with a really talented band, we have Dominique here with us. He's lead guitarist. Do you want to? Uh, do you have any projects solo that you might be doing yourself? Um, that uh, you want to talk about, maybe coming up? Y no, 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 no. Um, uh, I made uh, <laughs> one solo album in London, and I make uh, another one. It's called the first one is called the first. The second one is called the second. But this. Typical Dominic. But this is uh, something <laughs> else. I mean. This is uh, like studio uh, recordings and, 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 and not instant composing. It's uh, more the opposite of that. Um, uh, <coughs> yeah, it's just the opposite of that. It happened. But my heart belongs to this kind of work here. Okay. Yeah. Now, were you introduced to this sort of thing through Damo or was it something you were into for a while? And um, I was a um, professional musician uh, <coughs> Uh, and doing uh, uh, what ev everyone does. But um, one day I come from Amsterdam back home to Cologne in Germany and um, I uh, met Jackie Liebezeit and Roscoe G, who was bass player of um, Traffic mm -hmm. with Stevie Winwood. Steve Winwood and, and who was bass player with Ken in Cologne. And um, I wanted to to join these great musicians, to become more musicians, to mm -hmm. learn from them. And um, somehow Can was just finishing. They split up. And what was that, the uh, late 80s? Yes. Yeah, they, uh, yeah middle 80s, something. Yeah, yeah, something. And um, we, not only that Can split, this great band split, you know, it was also that Jackie and we all felt we start again. Mm -hmm. I mean, Can was a band that started again, you know, with 
Yeah, everything. like uh, what what they were doing in terms of and the way they were raised musically, they just abandoned it and started again. So there was yeah. that there was like a second incarnation of them the doing second, that. Second, yeah. Wow. Okay. So so that time, I mean, we didn't have the singer. The Damo was not there. Mm -hmm. that was, Malcolm was not there. I mean, we did concerts with the roadies, so-called roadies, mm. the people that put up the equipment, you know. Yeah. They were singing with <laughs> us. <laughs> yes. You just had any random vocalist. Yes, and we really um, uh, put questions behind every note, you know. Yeah. And restart everything. And luckily, um, someday, uh, Damo made it for a concert with a roadie of Ken. Wow. <laughs> they were singing together. <laughs> duet. <laughs> yeah, a duet. duet. Yeah. Yes. And that was... Uh, Did you guys harmonize? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was great. It was great. I, I have a cassette of that oh, concert. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I just told Damo he didn't know. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's... How about a new question? What's one thing you've My taken... My solo project. Oh, that's right, solo project. <laughs> uh, this only happened then when I thought, well, uh, uh, there's more, there's more what I li like to do than what's happening now. Mm -hmm. And sometime I had time to put that in my home on tape, mm -hmm. ideas, you know. Yeah. And um, people helped me and told me, just do it, yeah. And, and so the solo albums became a reality but uh, i never wanted them to become my reality because i like the work with other people yeah yeah, yeah. i feel very lonely solo, as a solo being artist. a solo artist yeah. it's very lonely were, were you a singer songwriter or were you the kind who uh, wrote I, uh, music through my whole time i'm doing professionally music i uh -huh. always do my own uh, work Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, only as amateur musician, that's the way we say amateurish musician, uh -huh. we, we cover, we, we start like that, you know, yeah, but yeah. I gave up, you know, luckily, I mm. become, my mind goes to make my own music, mm. yeah, absolutely, only my own music, wow. and with Damu it's possible, and with, with not very much people I know this is possible. Working with, with Damo, what's the one thing you've taken away from the experience that, uh, that you treasure as, you know, what's one thing you've learned from Damo that you really, uh, oh, uh, you're the greatest experience with him? Uh, very much I learned from Damo. Thank you very much. <laughs> very much. I, I paid him before. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I paid him 20 US dollars and that's oh, why he should say to that. Say so. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, it's, it's, it's hard to, to, to explain this, but... But but Damo's way um, of making this freedom reality, you know, and how to put that in your personal uh, life. reality mm -hmm. life. I'm working on that. I don't know if I ever reach that. He's uh, mm. he's oh, stupid. Don't say no, about he's, that. <laughs> he's absolutely uh, far far. A very good organized yeah. you know it's no chaos it's he, not uh, that, that's the thing with with this record although you guys are saying you know it's completely uh, you know um, instant composition it's just yes. so together you mm. know what i mean yeah. so it's it's just uh, an amazing thing to put together yeah, like this that, that's about instant composing because we are together yeah if we it's not together just improvisation it's yeah. different yeah yeah and, uh, okay so so people say what kind of music we start Explain what kind of music is this? This is not punk rock. This is not electronic. This is not techno. This is not ro rock. Uh, get away from all this. We say that was before before Damo came back. We say this is a Mediterranean old music <laughs> on modern instruments. Oh, wow. <laughs> but but uh, if somebody asks me which, which kind of music I play, I say I play only good music. Yes. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> see, so he always got it. <laughs> real quick, what do you think of the of the of the term kraut rock in ref in reference to can? Did you guys ever embrace that or? Oh, and sometimes I play with Mani Neumeyer from uh, Google. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have some contact and so on, but actually I don't like crowd rock. I don't like uh, this did you word like, crowd rock. Did you yeah. like the word crowd rock when people described can? No, I don't like this. Did any of the members? Uh, no, I don't like things like that. Somebody makes some, some kind of category. Yeah. 
yeah. and this is this and this is jazz this yeah. is uh, yeah. you know just i like to play music music is i actually you shouldn't have to make any kind of difference between and um, we play japanese people say i make some kind of free rock you know mm -hmm. but it's also it's not correct you know yeah. just just I, I like to have uh, some, some kind of situation. Somebody like to hear my music. That's uh, demo is uh, playing. That's is, is, is that enough, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because we make every time different. Yeah, that's the uh, funny thing about Can. It's it's people say Can Kraut Rock, and then you hear the movement of Kraut Rock, and yeah. then you hear Can, yeah. and there's really not much similar. You know, yeah. Can was really its own entity back then. Yeah. So it was really exactly. it's really funny how uh, how that term sticks to you guys. But you guys are definitely you know, one uh, one degree left of all that. Yeah, I think happening. I think we had so different kind of the people because you know me and Holgar was uh, studying uh, classic music and mm -hmm. modern music. JQ was a fully just a drama and Michelle was a rock guitarist and I was just a hippie, you know. Yeah. And every kind of every every kind of thing together and that's why maybe it's good is you know. If you make with the uh, uh, same kind of musician together, maybe you cannot get so much yeah. things together. What, um, were there any influences at all when you started singing? No, actually not. No influence? No, because I didn't like to be a singer. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're, <laughs> we're glad you did. I, w I, I wanted to like to be a president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> we'd probably be in a lot better shoes if you were president of the United States. Oh, thank you. We, we'd be all getting uh, yeah. smoky. Yeah, everybody got the new shoes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming down. It was Thank a you. really great time. Yeah. Once again, if you're in the Los Angeles area, tomorrow night at Spaceland, Damo Suzuki's network playing live. Uh, do you know what time you guys are going on at all? Uh, Tommy. Tommy. Uh, what time I go. are we going on? Um, I think about... Um, Please say after 10. <laughs> uh, yeah, after 10, at least. Okay, Thanks. so after 10. But come to see Michael Whitmore Quartet. Awesome, we will. And uh, once again, thank you guys very much for coming. Real quick, there's other releases on the label. All the... All the music is recorded live in concert. Yes. Is sure. there is there any plans at all to take the uh, instant composition into the studio and just record it in a studio? No, I don't like to go to the studio because uh, you don't have audience. Because audience is also our musicians. We make uh, together with okay. auditions. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And with that said, um, thank you very much, Damo Suzuki's Thanks. network, coming through to Dub Lab. Once again, we're out of here. Uh, do stay tuned. More music coming up here on Dub Lab. And uh, do look forward to this on the uh, archives if you guys missed any of it. It will be up in the next week or two. And make sure to support the album Odyssey, Damo Suzuki's network. We're going to hear one more. You wanted to hear track four on the first CD, correct? Without piano? Yes. And the name behind this one? No, I don't tell anything. Okay. You should get smoke. <laughs> <laughs> you should get smoke and uh, stay tuned. Dublab.com. So